ALS alternative learning systems fly ash and pm 2.5 or particulate matter 2.5 in fact uh, this was in news recently because the scientists developed a technique to convert fly ash into a waterproofing material in fact the researchers of indian institute of technology hyderabad has found that fly ash which is a waste by product of power plants that poses a threat to the environment can be modified into a waterproofing material the researchers have converted fly ash into a waterproofing material by treating it with stearic acid the stearic acid is commonly used in soaps and shampoos in fact stearic acid is a surface active agent whose key ingredient binds the dirt particles during the process of wash washing while its hydrophobic or water repelling part remains free so it has two parts it will bind the dirt but the hydrophobic that means you know it is allergic to water so uh, as a result the dirt particles bound with stearic acid separates out just like oil separates from water using this binding ability of the stearic acid researchers have developed a super hydrophobic fly ash particles so basically when it is mixed with the stearic acid this fly ash becomes hydrophobic that means they are against water they they will not mix with water so when it is super hydrophobic uh, you know fly ash particles it can be used for waterproofing so then what is stearic acid that is another question stearic acid is a waxy solid and it is a chem it has a chemical formula of c17 h35 co2h so c17 h35 co2h its name come from the greek word called steer which means tallow t a l l o w tallow means you know uh, the mutton and uh, beef fat i mean how that white uh, white or yellowish color uh, you know the fat that is what is called uh, tallow the salts and esters of stearic acid are called stearates and stearic acid is commonly used in the production of detergents soaps cosmetics such as shampoo shaving cream products etc now coming to fly ash fly ash or flue ash f l u e flue ash are also known as pulverized fuel ash is a coal combustion product because when the coal is burnt Uh, this is a byproduct of the coal combustion and uh, it is composed of particulates that are driven out of the coal fired boilers together with flue gas and ash that falls at the bottom of the boilers combustion chamber is called bottom ash so what is fallen in the bottom of the boiler chamber is called bottom ash and fly ash is a major source of pm 2.5 that means particulate matter 2.5 so which is uh, uh, you know smaller than a 2.5 micrometer or uh, much much smaller than even the uh, thickness of our hair is a very fine respirable pollution particles in summer especially it becomes airborne and it can be transported to 20 to 30 kilometer radius of the uh, you know these kind of power plants and it can settle on water and other surfaces also because very very fine particles we can inhale also and it is very is carcinogenic also then in modern coal fired power plants fly ash is generally captured by electrostatic precipitators electrostatic precipitators precipitators are used to capture this fly ash and by using other particulate filter filtration equipments before the flue gases reach the chimney so we we have a mechanism to capture it once it is captured then what to do with this fly ash that's a question and if it can be converted into uh, these kind of uh, you know waterproof material then it, there is some utility also but at the same time it can reduce the pollution also the especially the air pollution also so together with the bottom ash which is removed from the bottom of the boiler it is known as coal ash so fly ash from whatever ash is there in the bottom of the boiler together we call it as the coal ash and depending upon the source and composition of the coal being used because depending upon from where the coal is uh, you know extracted the, uh, the the waste material will have different uh, uh, you know chemicals which may be harmful to us 
So, uh, by fly ash include generally uh, this uh, uh, silicon dioxide SiO2, then aluminum oxide Al2O3, calcium oxide CaO, these are some of the main uh, components of the fly ash. Other than this, there are many minor constituents depending upon from where the source of the coal is there uh, and you know uh, it, it contains arsenic, beryllium, boron, cadmium, chromium, hexavalent chromium, cobalt, lead, manganese, mercury, molybdenum, selenium, strontium, thallium, vanadium. See just imagine so many micro components are there in the fly ash and many of them are harmful to our day to day life. And it, it also has some unburned carbon. So we are releasing everything into the atmosphere and this will car <coughs> and this will ultimately lead to atmospheric pollution. Some of them are greenhouse gases. So it has uh, a untold problems in the atmosphere when it is released into the atmosphere. <coughs> so this uh, uh, fly ash is a dangerous byproduct of the burning of the coal and especially the particulate matter 2.5 which is very very dangerous for our day to day life. Now let me talk about the suspended particulate matter in the atmosphere which in fact fly ash will be a part of that okay which is called SPM suspended particulate matter. In fact uh, within the among the suspended particulate matter there can be many subtypes for example uh, you know what is there in the atmosphere uh, include suspended particulate matter include uh, say uh, thoracic and respirable particles, inhalable coarse particles which are coarse particles with a diameter between a 2.5 micrometer to 10 micrometers. So PM 2.5 to 2, PM 2, uh, 10. Then fine particles with a diameter of 2.5 micrometers or less than that which is very very dangerous PM 2.5 and less than that size. Then ultra fine particles, soot, these are all part of the suspended particles okay these are all part of the suspended particulate matter SPM and according to WHO these airborne particulates are uh, particles are group 1 carcinogenic or carcinogens carcinogenic matter then these particulates are the deadliest form of air pollution which we do not uh, even understand because we do not see it properly. So, we do not even understand the seriousness of the matter. These are the deadliest form of air pollution due to their ability to penetrate deep into our lungs and blood streams unfiltered. It can go inside our blood stream unfiltered causing permanent DNA mutations, heart attacks and even premature death. Very, very dangerous. Suspended particulate matters are very, very dangerous. And uh, there is nothing called, uh, uh, you, know, you know, what is permissible, submissive, sorry, the suspended particulate matter. Everything is carcinogenic. And when it comes to PM 2.5, that is the most dangerous. And fly ash uh, is a, a major, uh, you know, source of this PM 2.5. Particulate matter 2.5. What is it? PM 2.5. It is a it is an atmospheric particulate matter of diameter fewer than 2.5 micrometers, or which is around 3 percent of the diameter of the human hair. Take a human hair and see the size. It 3 percent of it is particulate matter 2.5, and it causes respiratory problems and reduces uh, you know visibility also in the atmosphere. PM 2.5 can only be detected with the help of an electron microscope because they are so small only using an electron microscope we can watch it we can see it and what are its health implications as per the studies it could lead to premature death from heart and lung disease due to the smaller size of pm 2.5 it can easily bypass our nose and the throat and can easily enter into our circulatory system into our blood system this part uh, this uh, uh, particles can also lead to cause chronic diseases chronic diseases like asthma heart attack bronchitis and other respiratory problems so very very dangerous but now if you look at how can we save ourselves from it the only way is indoor when you stay indoor if you can filter the air okay using high efficiency particulate uh, air filters hepa high efficiency particulate air filters if you can use indoor it can reduce the our we, we, we inhaling it can reduce the amount of uh, particulate matter which we inhale and we have to stay as far as possible indoor 
avoid burning candles and other incessant sticks and all inside the room which will emit smoke and uh, it will create you know it will circulate within the room itself which is very dangerous because during puja time and all when you burn so many incessant sticks burning candle all these things can add to the particulate matter then there are certain food items which can increase the resistance the body resistance against uh, pm particulate matter 2.5 we can consume such things so these are some of the ways in which we can uh, escape from the particulate matters particulate matter 2.5 so in our this discussion which i am making we are talking about converting fly ash into waterproofing material so that this fly ash can be prevented from emitted into the atmosphere and at the same time it can be used for some useful uh, product by mixing or rather by treating it with stearic acid so that this fly ash becomes super hydrophobic fly ash particle that means who are resistant who are repulsive of water hydrophobic i mean phobia towards water hydrophobic super hydrophobic that means super resistive and repulsive towards the uh, you know the uh, you know water particles and that is what uh, the scientists of indian institute of uh, technology hyderabad has uh, you know invented recently